In the name of Jesus, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord, and we pray his blessing upon us as we gather around his word and his meal. It's a little bit of a different text today, and we got this picture of some wedding rings on the front bulletin. Uh, Jesus quotes from the Old Testament about uh, God's plans uh, for our husbands and wives. And yet we also have throughout the scripture God's story of how he loves us, and often the church is pictured as the bride of Christ. So we have two things to think about as we go through the red readings today, our relationships with one another and God's relationship with us. I've got one of those sermons that has a lot of Bible verses in it. So if you really want to get your Bible out and warmed up, we can go through the Bible today and uh, see a lot of these things together. Uh, are there any special announcements or prayer requests this morning? Okay. Um, our opening hymn uh, is one about marching to Zion, uh, looking forward to being with the Lord in heaven and that joy that we will have there. It's a joy that we have even now, but not yet in its fullness.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father. Beseech him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Unless the Lord builds the house, behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, your patience and loving kindness towards us have no end. 
Grant that by your Spirit we may always think and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost is from the second chapter of Genesis. Then the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. So out the Lord formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heaven and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man and said, This is, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He will command his angels concerning you. To guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The epistle is from the second chapter of Hebrews. Therefore, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation. It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere. What a man, what is a man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, put everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything under subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him for a little while. But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus crowned with glory and honor because of the sufferings and death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. 
For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he will, for he who sanctifies those who are sanctified all have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell you of your name to my I will tell of your <coughs> name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation I will sing your praise, and again I will put my trust in him, and again, behold I and the children of God has given me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory be to thee. Pharisees came up and, in order to test, Jesus asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of the hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him, that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, that whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and he blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear Christian friends. It wasn't that long ago that ships on the ocean sailed under the power of the wind. I was looking at one of my storybooks that had a picture of one of these sailboats, and there were 21 different sails on the boat. <clears throat> I kind of think of a f sail like something I would put on my, you know, skateboard and try to go straight with the wind, get, let it blow you. <laughs> but these guys were artists. Uh, sails were more like a wing. They could go more than one direction. And with their 21 sails, they all had to be at the right place at the right time so they could go where they wanted to go. <clears throat> in particular, during a time of a storm or if they were in the midst of a battle, they had been manning the lines. And I'm told that several of the, those people in that day would put on their Fingers, H O L D F A S T. Hold fast. That's the job right there, to hold fast. And it's interesting to me that most likely, if that's on your palms like this and you're holding fast, who can read it? It's the guy over there trying to hold on to his line, too. You need them both to work together in order to get the ship where you wanted to go at the right time. And if somebody let go, that sail just starts flapping around and the wind doesn't do anyone any good. Jesus in the gospel lesson is at that time in his ministry where there are people that are trying to undermine him The Pharisees are trying to test him, and this wasn't just a normal school test. They are trying to convince the people not to listen to Jesus, but to listen to them instead. And so they come with their questions that they think is a catch-all, or something that's going to get him in trouble. Uh, and they say, well, here's a sticky issue. How about divorce? Now I can promise you that no one out there has a perfect divorce. <laughs> no one out there has a perfect marriage. In fact, none of you out there are perfect at all. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, so let's just get over the fact that there is sin in the world and the solution to sin is not us being perfect. But Jesus is taking that sin into his own hands. The hands of our Lord. There's so many things to think about in the scripture, this holding fast in the hands of our Lord. I want to take you on a quick tour of these, some of these things. Uh, and I sort of have these arranged in order as they go through the Bible. So Deuteronomy 13, verse 4. Here we're looking for that word, hold fast. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him and hold fast to him. God invites his people to hold fast to him like that rope on the boat the sailboat, when we have a good hold on it, things are go the way they're supposed to. 
we let go of God, life just kind of flaps around in the wind. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. A father is giving instruction to his son here. He says, Let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get insight. Do not forget and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will keep you. Love her and she will guard you. Here's another instance where holding fast has something to do with wisdom, with faith, with the Word of God. Because there are plenty of fools in the world, plenty of lies to chase after, but God's Word is the beginning of wisdom. Holding on to Him is worth it. The next one comes from the prophet Hosea, and you might remember that God uh, told Hosea to go marry a prostitute, then divorce her, and then go marry her again. And here we have in, verse, in chapter 12, verse 6, the Lord is speaking. So you, by the help of your God, return. Hold fast to love and justice and wait continually for your God. Repent, turn back to the Lord. Hold fast to justice, to love. Waiting for your God. What do we hold on to in this world of hate and injustice? Our God, who is justice and love. We could go on. There's several passages in the New Testament as well, like Romans 12, 4, hold fast to that which is good. 1 Corinthians 15, hold fast to the word. Hebrews 4.14, hold fast to the confession. And in Revelation says, hold fast to the name. Faith is something more than just a knowledge in the back of our head. It's something that we hold on to in the middle of the storm, in the midst of the battle. This is our job. Hold fast. These are the important things. Let's turn our attention a little bit more specifically to Jesus. In our reading today, some people think that there's nothing to do between the two sections where Jesus is talking about divorce and marriage and when Jesus takes the children in their hands and blesses them. But I thought this interesting. How do you hold fast with your hands? What did Jesus do? Instead of saying the children are unimportant, he took the children and blessed them with his hands. You see that verse 16? He took them in his arms and he blessed them, laying his hands on them. He took that time to hold on to that which was precious. Mark chapter 6, verse 2, talks a little bit more about Jesus' hands. He began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is this wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Isn't that an interesting connection in verse of things, the wisdom and all these things that we had had in the Old Testament about holding fast to? They're connected to 
the mighty works done by the hands of Jesus as he taught the people. One of my favorite pictures of Jesus is that of the Good Shepherd, and in John chapter 10, we have a bit of an extended section about what that Good Shepherd does with his hands, starting at verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe the works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will be able to snatch them out of my hand. My Father and I, my Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. In the gospel lesson, he talked about holding fast and two becoming one. We have here in John 10, Jesus holding in his hands all those who have been given him by the Father. The Father holds them in his hands. This hand holding <laughs> talks about their unity. And they sometimes make fun of us time to time, but a husband, hold hands with your wife. Hold faster. It's a sign of unity and community. It's a sign of faith going somewhere together. Behind this word in where it comes from, they say the, the word hold fast is kind of like be glued together so that the two substances, what makes a strong bond when you glue something together? Instead of having two pieces, they become one. As we sang in the sermon hymn, our main problem in this world is that we love ourselves more than anything else and we don't really understand how to love others. But when we look to Jesus, we see a love of another kind. Jesus, who came into this world, who told his disciples, we're going to Jerusalem where I'm going to be turned over to the hands of sinners. They're going to nail my hands to the cross. They're going to mock me. They're going to mock what I'm doing. They're going to mock my power. If you were powerful, you could get your hands off the cross and come down. But Jesus held fast to the cross because he loved us. Because he was tasting death for us so that we would not die but have the forgiveness of our sins. When Christ had risen from the dead and Thomas missed out on seeing him, his hands come into play once again. John chapter 20, 25 and following. So the other disciples told Thomas, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless I see his hands, in his hands, the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put your hand and place it into my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, 
my Lord and my God. Jesus, who held fast to the promise of the Father on the cross, died in our place, loved even Thomas, the doubter, called for his hand. Put it here in my side. And Thomas is the first in John's gospel to make this great confession. The first disciple, my Lord and my God. He holds fast to the words of Jesus. And he makes that bold confession. And his life is changed is now he knows the power of God's love, the power of his grace and mercy that has defeated death and the grave. Do our families and marriages need some work? Do they need some grace? Yes, they do. And yet God did not leave us in the depths of despair, but he sent us the help that we need in his own son, who holds us in his hands, who held fast to the cross, who held fast to the Father's word, who held fast to the promise and the name. He's the one that bled for you. He's the one that died for you. He's the one that gives his body and blood for you that you might hold fast to him, that you might have that capacity to love the way that he alone can love, that we might love others, that husbands and wives would love each other and hold fast to one another and become one as God planned. If we can do that, we can make this world a better place. And even when we fail, we have a place to go to our Savior who would never lose those he holds in his hands. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving Father, your Son took the little children and held them in his arms, blessing them with his hands. Help your saints to welcome little ones with joy that nothing may hinder their entrance into the kingdom of God and arms of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, you give us men that hold fast to the good confession to guide your church on earth. We ask your blessing on Matthew, our synod president, Michael, our district president, Kevin, our circuit visitor, and all pastors together with the many servants and treasures of your church. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, be near all couples. This world is in need of men that hold fast to the wife you have put together with them, living in holy marriage. Guard them from hardness of heart that would separate what you have held together and reconcile them to one another to live in Christ's forgiveness and love. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, be near to sustain our families torn apart by abortion, adultery, and divorce. Sustain and heal the wounded with your love. Give repentance to the guilty and hope in your forgiveness in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, almighty God, grant your wisdom to Joseph, our president, to all public servants, and to those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, that they may be strengthened and upheld in every good deed. Lord, in your mercy, gracious God, you promise to abide with your people and to uphold them in their suffering. Comfort all who are sick and sorrowing, including Judy Bossi. Strengthen their faith in the midst of their trials and grant them health and healing according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your Son gives us his very body and blood to eat and to drink in the supper. Grant us your grace that we may approach your table with repentant hearts, hold fast to your promise, and a firm resolution to amend our sinful lives by the help of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, help us by your Spirit to hold fast to you and walk in your ways in Christ, that we may eat the fruit of the labor of our hands and receive your blessing in all that we do. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is given for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant mercy Take and eat the very body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for you.
now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to light and the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord, thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 <coughs> Christ sits at God's right hand his saving work complete to reign till every foe will lie beneath his feet all that the father planned the son sought to fulfill when first he said lord here am i to do Christ was that priest God swore, uniquely first and last, who would in righteousness and love be unsurpassed. A priest forevermore, an oath God would not break, a priest in no Order of Melchizedek. Christ's altar was the tree where on the world's behalf he shed a blood unlike the blood of coal or cow to seal God's guarantee of grace that cannot fail 
with blood he entered for our good behind the veil. What costly sacrifice! Enter in his blood that sprinkled price, so we might be assured that our inheritance in light has been secured. Then let us now draw near, washed in that precious blood, and enter the most holy place by Jesus' blood. From hearts that are sincere, let tongues our hope profess, and trust unto God's faithful grace that we confess. All praise to Christ we bring, our Lord who intercedes, our great high priest enthroned above who knows our need and to the father see our songs of thankful praise who with the spirit reigns in love for endless days